Okay, this model of skin, we're going to look at it far away for a second, then we'll do close up, is showing you three different types of skin. This is skin, thick skin on the palms of the hands, the soles of the feet. This is your skin like in the axilla, the armpit region, and then this would be skin like on your scalp, for example, or another part of the body. You have your three main layers of skin. You've got epidermis, okay, that's your stratified squamous epithelium. You have the dermis going from the bottom of the epidermis all the way down to where this fat starts. And remember the dermis is made up of dense irregular connective tissue in the reticular region here. And up here in the papillary region is mostly areolar type of tissue. This is your hypodermis here and it mostly has adipose. That's what all that yellow stuff is. Now we'll look at it a little bit close up. Okay, so we're going to look at the epidermis first. The epidermis is composed of uh, several layers. Each of the layers has a different name. Starting at the bottom, closest to the dermis, you have a single layer of cells, and they're represented in this model as purple. Those are your stem cells. Those are replacing all of your keratinocytes that are dying. This is called your stratum basal. Stratum just means layer, so the basal layer is stratum basal. You can see that here, and you can also see that over here as that lower purple layer. As the cells move towards the surface, they're going to enter the next layer, which is the stratum spinosum. On this model, it happens to be lighter purple. Okay, this is a relatively thick layer. These cells look a little spiny, which is why it's called stratum spinosum. They're starting to accumulate pre-keratin before they become keratinized. Then they're going to move up to the next layer here, which is the stratum granulosum, represented by purple again. These are starting to accumulate big, thick granules of keratin. And as we move closer to the surface, the cells enter the stratum lucidum, which is this white line. Stratum lucidum is only present in thick skin. Notice over here, there is no extra layer. Okay, so thick skin has that one extra layer. And then moving all the way to the surface, you have your stratum corneum. That's your dead layer of cells, those keratinized, uh, that keratinized layer of cells. Obviously, you have lots of that on the palms of your hands and soles of your feet. Not a lot of that on the rest of the body. So that's epidermis. So you should know the layers of that. Then we'll look at the dermis. Okay, so this is all dermis. Now the dermis is divided into two layers. You've got the papillary layer here, which has all these ridges. Papilla, they're called. Papilla just means finger, basically. So these are finger-like projections in, that go up and kind of make this wavy pattern at the base of the epidermis. So this is the papillary layer of the dermis mostly areolar tissue, and in the papillary layer you can see these little guys here that look kind of like fingerprints. These are Meissner's corpuscles. They're nervous tissue receptors. So they're going to pick up touch sensations in the skin. This part of the dermis is called the reticular layer. Mostly dense irregular connective tissue proper here. Very strong, very elastic. In the reticular layer, you have things like arteries and veins. Okay, you saw some capillaries up here. You have sweat glands, which are these structures. All of these are sweat glands. This is eccrine, sweat gland, eccrine, sweat gland, eccrine. This is an apocrine sweat gland. You can see the duct leading up to the surface. Remember, these are exocrine. Okay, and also in the dermis, you have your hair follicles. This is the root of the hair follicle down here where it's connected to the blood vessels and everything. On the hair follicle, you have an erector pili muscle. This is going to contract when you're cold or frightened and give you goosebumps. It makes your hair stand straight up. This is the shaft of the hair here in the hair follicle. And this right here is an oil gland. So this is going to release oil into that hair follicle and go to the surface with the hair. So that's the dermis. 
Then the hypodermis we have here, mostly adipose. That's what all this yellow stuff is. Lots of blood vessels here as well. And you might see another structure called a pacinian corpuscle. This little thing that looks like an onion, which is also a pressure receptor. So this is going to pick up sensory information from the lower part of the dermis and the um, subcutaneous layer. Hypodermis, dermis, epidermis, stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basal, papillary layer of the dermis, Meisner's corpuscle, reticular layer of the dermis, sweat gland, hypodermis with adipose, placentian corpuscle, hair root, hair follicle with the hair shaft, erector pili muscle, oil gland. Okay, that does it for the first practical. Okay, I just wanted to show you this uh, a little different model. Same structures as the skin, but that we just looked at. Here's your epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. You've got stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basal, Meisner's corpuscle, dermal papillae in the papillary layer of the dermis, particular layer of the dermis, sweat glands, arteries and veins, placentian corpuscles, hypodermis with fat, Got an oil gland, look for it in attaching to that hair follicle here. Okay, here's your the shaft of your hair in your hair follicle. Here's the root. You can see that better here. The root of the hair. Rector pili muscle, another sweat gland, oil gland. Okay. Okay, I forgot another thing. Uh, we have these muscle cell models in the lab as well. I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at them yet, but you should be able to distinguish the same things on these that you can distinguish on the histology. So this is one right here, and this is the skeletal muscle. And you can see the striations here, little red lines there. You can see multiple nuclei per cell. So this is one cell. Here's another cell lots of nuclei. Already you can see two there. This is just a fibroblast. And these are straight per, uh, parallel cells, so that's how you know that they are skeletal. If you look at the cross section, you can see a bunch of nuclei in there. This also gives it away because this is a motor end plate, which you only find on skeletal muscles. Now this one, in contrast, is a cardiac muscle cell. Okay, these are kind of the ends of the cells, and you can see that this cell branches. It does have striations, and this dark black line is an intercalated disc. If we turn it around this way, you can see several intercalated discs. You can see that each cell has one nucleus, so here's a cell, it has one. Here's a cell, it has one. And you can see the striations. Okay, so notice the differences between those two. Okay, so this is skeletal, and this is cardiac. And then the last one we have is smooth, which looks totally different than the other two. Okay, so you can see they're long, skinny, spindle-shaped cells. Has it one nucleus. Here's a cell, a cell, a cell. If we turn it sideways, you can see lots of little spindly cells and this way as well. Lots of little cells. And each one has one nucleus. So remember, smooth is uh, involuntary. It has no striations because you don't see any red lines here. <laughs> Cardiac has striations and it is involuntary, so it moves all by itself just like smooth does. And skeletal muscle has striations but only moves by voluntary commands. So this one is the only one that is voluntary. Now while we're at it, I'll show you this one last skin model that we have because it's a little different than the other two. It looks like it has a whole lot more stuff, but really it's got the same exact things. This is uh, the epidermis, all of these colored layers here. They're just kind of breaking them out for you. 
stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and then this is all stratum corneum. You have a hair follicle here with an oil gland. You can see another one here. Here's your root of your hair. Here's your rector pili muscle, sweat gland. These are your Meisner's corpuscles in your papillary layer of the dermis. Here's your reticular layer of the dermis. Here's your Pacinian corpuscle in your hypodermis down here. This is another sweat gland. Another Pacinian corpuscle here. So you can see it's the same structures, they just look a little different. Okay, and I think that really does, does it for, um, for this practical. Good luck!